Hello, everyone. My name is Katie Ray Jones, and I am the CEO of the National Domestic Violence Hotline and Love is Respect. We appreciate you all uh, for taking the time today to join us in recognition of Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. If you missed the earlier announcement, uh, we will be taking questions via the Q&A feature of Zoom. And we are also recording the webinar and it will be available for streaming later this week. You will receive an email letting you know when that is um, available. Today we're working with our partners at the One Love Foundation and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to talk about the epidemic of teen dating abuse, current trends we're seeing, how we educate on healthy relationships, and where to go for support when you or someone you care for is in an unhealthy or abusive relationship. At this time, I'd like to make some introductions. We will hear more later from Katie Hood, the CEO of the One Love Foundation and myself. Uh, throughout this webinar, you will learn about activities, statistics, and tools available to educate young people and those around them about healthy versus unhealthy relationships. But first, it's my uh, pleasure today to introduce our first speaker, uh, Commissioner Elizabeth Darling. Uh, Ms. Darling is the Commissioner at the Administration of Children, Youth, and Families, or ACYF, at the Administration for Children and Families at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Commissioner Darling leads two bureaus at ACYF, the Children's Bureau and the Family and Youth Services Bureau. The Family and Youth Services Bureau supports the Family Violence Prevention and Services Act, or as we all fondly call it, SIPSA, which provides the primary federal funding stream dedicated to the support of emergency shelter and supportive services for victims of domestic violence and their dependents. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Commissioner Darling. Good morning. Thank you so much, Katie. I'm really excited uh, about this webinar and reading through, through it. I just thought the information was so solid and so uh, to the point about how we can not only help young people, but all, um, all people of all ages actually to really think about healthy relationships. So thank you for including me today. Um, I love to talk about FIPSA and about DVAM. Um, I'd like to tell you just very briefly why, um, why this is so, such an important part of the portfolio that falls under the commissioner. The commissioner for the Administration on Children, Youth, and Families, as Katie said, has two bureaus. The Children's Bureau, Child Abuse and Neglect, Foster Care and Adoption, and the Family Youth Services Bureau, which has three programs, Adolescent Pregnancy Prevention, runaway and homeless youth programs, and including maternity group homes, transitional living programs, street outreach, and basic center programs, and FIPSA. So we're all about youth from, uh, from the cradle to um, emancipation or aging out or early adulthood. So this um, webinar is extremely important across all of those that we serve or seek to serve. The Family Violence Prevention and Services Act, or FIPSA, was first passed by Congress in 1984 and has helped communities all over the country to build infrastructure through programming to support domestic violence survivors. FIPSA supports life-saving services throughout the country through our grants to states, tribal governments, and territories, in addition to our support for the National Domestic Violence Hotline. When FIPSA was first written, Congress used the term family violence, and the legislation is uh, synonymous with domestic violence. However, research and evidence has grown over the intervening 35 years of FIPS's existence and more commonly used language of domestic violence has become adopted to align with the Violence Against Women's Act and the Victims of Crime Act. More specifically though, FIPSA implements programs for a few different purposes. Those purposes are increasing public awareness and primary prevention of domestic and dating violence, 
which speaks to why we're all gathered today around this webinar. Also providing immediate shelter and supportive services to individuals experiencing domestic or dating violence and their dependents. Operating the National Domestic Violence Hotline and providing technical assistance and training related to domestic and dating violence to local public agencies, nonprofits, tribal organizations, and others. This includes the establishment of state domestic violence coalitions and national resource centers. Through FIPS's programs, communities are empowered to effectively address violence perpetration themselves at the local level within communities. FIPSA provides both a safe haven and an array of supportive services to intervene when help is needed and to prevent abuse. And it's so important that we prevent abuse, especially in young people. We are proud to be working with our partners at the National Domestic Violence Hotline and Love is Respect to launch Hashtag One Thing campaign and this TVAM, DVAM. Dating violence is preventable, especially if education about healthy relationships starts early. This month and beyond, we want educators, youth, and community leaders to join along with teams in creatively promoting messages about dating violence prevention and to raise awareness of the differences between healthy, unhealthy, and abusive relationships. In today's webinar, we'll hear from experts at Love is Respect and the One Love Foundation, who will share insights with us into dating abuse, which data shows is experienced by nearly 1.5 million high school students nationwide every year. We'll learn how all of us can help prevent abusive relationships. We believe it starts with a conversation. We want to extend our appreciation to the National Resource Center on Domestic Violence and their Domestic Violence Awareness Project for creating the hashtag one thing campaign and allowing Love is Respect to use this thing for TDBIM. On that note, I'm gonna pass it back over to Katie Ray Jones, who is an expert among us all. She is CEO of the National Domestic Violence Hotline and Love is Respect and provides strategic vision and leadership for the only hotline in the nation that links victims and survivors to more than 4,500 shelters across the United States, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Katie has established herself as a leader in the domestic violence movement, and she has extensive experience working with victims and survivors. Katie is also a member of the National Task Force to End Domestic and Sexual Violence. So once again, thank you all for joining us today. Dating violence is preventable, and we look forward to learning more. So with uh, without further delay, Katie Ray Jones. Thank you so much, Commissioner Darling, for that fantastic introduction and overview of FIPSA and Team DBAN. We are so grateful for your leadership and support uh, across the nation and the impact the FIPSA office is having on so many uh, women, men, and children. Uh, Love is Respect was launched in February 2007 as a project of the National Domestic Violence Hotline. It started as a prevention and education resource for teens who are at higher risk of intimate partner violence. By providing education on healthy and unhealthy relationships, Love is Respect and is an essential resource to help teens and young adults recognize warning signs of abuse early on and to learn how to take action to prevent and end abusive relationships. In 2019, over 4 million people visited loveisrespect.org and hundreds of people call, chat, or texted with our expert advocates for information and support. In 2019, we received more than 100,000 calls, chats, and texts to Love is Respect. Although I'm extremely proud that we are able to provide this service, 
We envision a world where all relationships are positive, healthy, and free from violence. And that means a world where our services are no longer needed. Until that time, we'll be here to answer the call to support and shift power back to those affected by relationship abuse. Today marks the start of Respect Week, which is a week that we look forward to all year. Respect Week is a special way to raise awareness about healthy relationships and dating abuse every second week of February. Today is announcement day of Respect Week. The goal of the Respect Announcement is to remind people that love has many definitions, but abuse is not one of them. Whether you make your announcement in person or on social media, either way is a powerful way to remind your community that everyone deserves a respectful and healthy relationship. Tomorrow, February 11th, is Wear Orange Day. Orange is the official color of Team DBAM, and we hope that you'll challenge your friends and family to, who, to see who can wear the most orange and make sure to use hashtag one thing when posting on social media. On Wednesday, February 12th, is a day to respect yourself through self-care. Self-care means taking the time to care for yourself in whichever way works best for you. Whether you're taking a walk, watching your favorite show, or practicing deep breathing, whatever you do to relax is a great way to practice self-care. On Thursday, February 13th, is when we're encouraging you to post on social media about healthy and unhealthy relationships. Every relationship, regardless of each person's sexual orientation or identity, requires honest communication, trust, safety, and respect. If you have any questions about healthy relationships, make sure to tune into our Healthy Relationships Ask Me Anything over at Love is Respect's Facebook page at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. And finally, on Friday, February 14th, which is of course Valentine's Day, whether you're in a relationship or not, start a dialogue with your partner, your family, or a loved one about what a healthy relationship looks like to you. You can find all of this information and more by going to loveisrespect.org slash month. For Team DBAM this year, uh, Love is Respect created two action guides. The first is a guide for the primary audience of Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month, teens. This guide covers the types of dating abuse, what makes a relationship healthy versus unhealthy, and gives teens some actionable next steps to take. Something we talk a lot about at Love is Respect is self-care, hence self-care day this week, and we give teens some tips on how to take the best care of themselves whether they are in a relationship or not. This year, we felt it was important to create a separate guide for who we refer to as helpers. Helpers can be teachers, parents, coaches, or anyone who knows and loves a teen. I would say that most of you on this webinar most likely qualify as a helper. You're all critical in helping teens develop healthy relationships, and you can provide life-changing support to them if they are in an abusive situation. In fact, we recently put a website poll on loveisrespect.org, and 25% of the people who visited our website during the poll said they visited because a teacher referred them to Love is Respect. So the work you're doing every single day is instrumental in making sure that we can prevent teen dating violence. Our guides are on our website to download at loveisrespect.org slash teendbmonth. You can find these two guides, and you will also find a guide for ideas for Respect Week. We also have some social media graphics, fill in the blank posts and printable posters that you can use on social media as well as in your communities. Once again, everything is available at loveisrespect.org slash teendbmonth. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Katie Hood, the CEO of the One Love Foundation. The One Love Foundation is a leading educator of young people on the topic of healthy and unhealthy relationships as both a primary prevention strategy for relationship abuse and as an investment in the relationship health of the next generation. Katie has been the CEO of the One Love Foundation since 2014. Prior to joining One Love, Katie was CEO at the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research for nine years. She's worked as a philanthropic consultant and served as visiting lecturer at Duke University Stanford School of Public Policy. Before discovering her passion for philanthropy, she held positions at both Goldman Sachs and Bain and & Company. Katie is a passionate, dynamic speaker who has appeared at TED Global, 
Aspen Ideas Health Milk and Global Conference, and Fortune's Most Powerful Women Conference. Katie received her bachelor's degree in public policy from Duke University and an MBA from Harvard Business School. One Love has educated nearly 1 million people through in-person workshops and reached over 100 million people through online educational video content. We're delighted to be partnering on this Team DBAM webinar with One Love. And now I would like to turn it over to my colleague and friend, Katie Hood. Thank you, Katie. I'm so glad to be here. And it's a pleasure to be on this webinar with you as well, Commissioner Darling. Um, if you go to the next slide, um, while I started as CEO in 2014, I've been involved uh, with One Love since 2010, actually since May 3rd, 2010, when Yardley Love, who was a senior at the University of Virginia, was beaten to death by her ex-boyfriend. I did not know Yardley, but her cousin is one of my closest friends. And so um, I was a newcomer to this issue. And if I look back, I think, wow, given what I know now about the prevalence of teen dating violence, of domestic violence, the fact that I didn't really think that much about it until it was personal to somebody I cared about is something I'm embarrassed about to this day. But I think having been there that day, I realized a couple things that were really important. And one was that her family had no idea this was coming or in the realm of possibilities. And I think that's really quite frequently too often the case, particularly with teen dating violence. As I watched them emerge from the shock and horror and, and approach the trial, um, they, I watched them come to this realization that if a domestic violence expert had been in the middle of Yardley's friend group, that they would have immediately seen the signs that her friends and she did not see or that they, they dismissed as other things, whether that's drama or too much drinking. And so basically her family came to the conclusion that they wanted to provide young people with the information that could have prevented Yardley's death because they believed that this knowledge about the warning signs and about where to go for help would absolutely have saved her life. They wanted to talk to young people in a language they could hear. And by that they meant they didn't want to lecture her, but lecture people. They thought about how Yardley and her peers would have wanted to learn. And they decided that film was the way they were going to go. So I joined in 2014 after four years working with this family to sort of try to help advise them on what to do and where to go. And I joined because they created a film called Escalation. And when I watched Escalation, every hair on my arm stood up because I knew that if Yardley had seen this film, she would have understood her own life better and known that she needed to go get help. It was around this time that her mother, Sharon, articulated a vision for doing for the issue of domestic violence, relationship violence, what Mothers Against Drunk Driving had done for is that issue, namely shift the stigma from the abuse to the abuser and inspire and empower bystanders to take away the keys. So our goal today is to educate young people about the difference between healthy and unhealthy relationships as early as we can so that they can learn to identify the signs and have the tools to help themselves and their friends before unhealthy relationships escalate to abuse. Um, in addition to film, I would say our model and the reason it's scalable and the reason we've been able to reach so many people is that we have a model that relies on training non-experts to start the conversations. We believe the problem is just so massive that if we don't figure out a way to empower non-experts to start these conversations and teach their peers, we're never gonna be able to reach everyone. And then I guess the next piece of our model that's really important is once educated, we wanna rally young people to lead. So if you go to the next slide. So we have this vision that relationship health education should be an essential element of every child's K-12 education. And there's two real reasons for that. On the next slide, you can see that away from domestic violence, we understand the research shows that the health of our relationships dictates nearly every outcome in our lives. Research shows that the better quality our relationships are, the better our physical and mental health will be, and the better our life outcomes will be. So domestic violence is clearly one, our issue. It's the issue we started with, and it's the issue we're passionate about changing. We want to prevent what happened to Yardley um, to happen from happening to other people. But we're also realizing that the, the potential is much bigger. And then away from domestic violence and investment in the next generation's relationship health could have an, a trickle down effect on extensive array of social issues plaguing our society today. So if you go to the next slide, and actually, can you skip it? Thank you. Uh, but then of course, relationship health education is a primary prevention approach to the public health epidemic of domestic violence. Given the magnitude of the issue, the, the economic costs, the personal costs, 
uh, the social costs, this is an issue deserving of a scaled approach to prevention. And that's what we're trying to push forward. So if you go back to the slide you just skipped, sorry. This is just a little summary of what we've done. And I'm happy to say that it's February now and we have crossed the million dollar, a million person educated mark, which is if you had told me three years ago when we had just crossed 100,000, I'm not sure I would have imagined it was possible but it's really taking off because of our train the trainer model that empowers people to lead in their communities. We have nearly 23,000 volunteers trained to help lead our educational workshops. If you go to our website, joinonelove.org, if you're interested in leading this discussion, you can find out about being trained. And we, we phil philanthropically fund the availability of our tools so that anyone anywhere can use the films we create and the discussion guides we create to teach the young people they love about this issue. Um, when you look at what's coming out, 96% of young people say they would recommend our workshops to a friend, 95% say their facilitator was prepared for the discussion, and 90% of the students understand what resources are now, av now available to them if they are someone in their friend circle is in an abusive relationship. So I frequently say there's two things going on here. One, we want to give young people a pair of glasses so that they understand the signs they are seeing in their lives. Um, and two, we want to be a bridge that bridges them to resources that exist. And I will tell you, we could not do what we do without the local providers of resources who we refer to out of all of our workshops, but also love is respect. Um, when I talk to my team about the group that they couldn't do their jobs without, it is love is respect. It's a vital resource that's really supporting young people as they learn to work through and manage their relationships. So if you go to the next slide, Sorry that my slides are out of order. And the next slide. I wanted to sort of close by sharing with you my, um, the signs of a healthy relationship. So when we started doing this work, one of the things we realized is that language really matters. And that like it or not, even though we know young women 16 to 24 are at three times greater risk to be in an abusive relationship, they really don't want to own that term. And I would say that stigma continues to be the biggest thing that I, I fight in my job every day. I think just as human beings, we want to think this isn't relevant to us. So we explicitly started focusing on healthy versus unhealthy relationships as a space where if we did our education there, it would almost be like arming them with information they needed as they started their relationship so that they could recognize signs and understand when those signs became patterns that would indicate that they're becoming abusive. So our signs of a healthy and unhealthy relationship, we started by creating the signs of an unhealthy relationship, working with researchers to understand that specific space around emotional abuse and how to define this and define these behaviors in ways that were really accessible to young people. And what we find in our programs is not only do young people understand this in the context of a romantic relationship, they really understand it in the context of friendships and other relationships as well. Our healthy relationship signs really evolved out of um, requests from young people to understand now that we understand unhealthy, how can we better understand healthy? And so we've come up with this framework and this language because we think if every young person in the country could learn what these behaviors look like in their lives, that they'd be better prepared to help themselves and their friends when they inevitably pop up. We frequently also say that while well, one in three women and one in four men, or one in seven men, depending on who you quote, will be in an abusive relationship, 100% of us will be in unhealthy relationships and 100% of us will do unhealthy things. So our goal is just to increase their sensitivity so that they know what to call it and how to talk to um, each other about their relationships and then get help if they need it, help if they need it, sorry. So with that, I think that's the last slide in my section. Happy to answer any questions when the time is right. Thank you so much, Katie Hood, for that excellent overview of the very important work you all do at the One Love Foundation. And I continue to be amazed by the reach that One Love Foundation is having with so many young people across the country. Um, every February, we've confronted, we're confronted by the fact that teen dating violence is more common than people think. While the statistics are stark, I still hope every February seeing communities, both online and in person, join together to raise awareness um, regarding teen dating abuse. To me, uh, this feeling of hope really grows every year. Only by continuing to talk about these difficult issues can we call attention to teen dating violence. I believe this is only the first step towards preventing and ending the cycle of abuse. And I'm grateful for every person on this webinar for being here and for continuing to be part of the solution. 
And the work doesn't stop today. Uh, all of us here at Love is Respect and at One Love Foundation are here to support you in your important work, not just during Team DVAM, but every day. As I said, we're in this together, and please make sure you're following Love is Respect on social media, especially during Team DVAM. Uh, before we close out, we want to thank our partners at the Administration of Children, Youth, and Families, Family and Youth Services Bureau, uh, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services for supporting this project. Commissioner Darling, we know you are incredibly busy, so thank you so much for spending some time with us uh, today. A big thank you to our partners at the One Love Foundation for being a fantastic partner um, this Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. And we also want to thank um, all of you who are on the line for taking time to be, with he be here with us today. We hope you have a great day and we hope that we have provided you with some strategies to take part in Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. I think all of our speakers today have really said we're all in this together and um, we know that this is preventable and together we can put an end to uh, teen dating violence and um, adult intimate partner violence as well. Thank you so much. If you have further questions um, after the webinar, you can reach out to Christina at cso at thehotline.org. Thank you so much.